passionate about music. Do you still wear the tracksuit? <laughs> um, you know what? In my spare time. <laughs> you know, there's an Adidas tracksuit is never going to look bad, is it? No, no, absolutely. Well, well, uh, you... maybe, maybe I worded that wrong. And an Adidas <laughs> tracksuit is always... Going to look good on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> well, you on always right carry you always carry them very well. You're good self. Now, why is the new album called The Sea? Well, I was in Brighton and I was working with Richard Stannard, who people sometimes know as Biff, and we were writing together. And he was one of the guys I worked with years ago with the Spice Girls. We did Wanna Be Together, Spice Up Your Life, Two Become One, loads of big hits. Now, he now works in Brighton, and I'd walk along the seafront every morning to the studio, and we wrote a song called The Sea. And I just thought it was such an inspiring time, and looking out to the sea and how powerful it is and unpredictable, and I just thought, oh, that's perfect. That's how I want the album to be, and that's how it was named. Oh, I'm sold already. Are you, Neil? <laughs> you make, make it sound like a, something you could eat, the way you say it. it sounds yeah, great. I think Brighton need you for their PR. Get it, was me, like, yeah. it was like an M&S advert. Oh, yes. <laughs> this isn't just an album. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that you love about singing? Oh, gosh. I think for me it's really freedom. It's a way to express yourself. And, you know, sometimes in life it's it's difficult to, to talk and express your emotions or say the things to people you really want to say. Say. But if you can say it in a song, you're kind of safe. You know, there's no repercussions. So, uh, have you ever been in a situation where you've sent somebody, somebody that maybe you're involved with, one of your songs? Oh, I love it. Um, or what, to tell them exactly how yeah. I feel. <laughs> no, because I think I, I find it quite cryptic. Yeah. Because um, cause I'm too much of a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you've talked about in, in the, the new album here, The Sea, uh, that it's yeah. a lot more grown up. What's changed in your life since we kind of last heard from you? Quite a lot, you know. The biggest life change will be becoming a mum. I've got a lovely little girl now, Scarlett's two and a half. So that was quite a big life changer, obviously. But, um, yeah, it's made me feel, like, really courageous and, and really determined to succeed. I, I just want to make her really proud of me. Oh! <gasps> Yeah, so that, that's been a really, a really lovely thing that's happened. And I, you know, I never expected that from becoming a mum. Um, I toured with the Spice Girls again, which was pretty incredible. And I worked with her. I was in Blood Brothers for six months. Yeah, oh, we must yeah. talk Blood Brothers. Yeah, so oh, that was my amazing. God. Yes. How on earth did you land up in Blood Brothers? Well, I... I had some time off after having Scarlett and I just didn't know what I wanted to do about getting back to work and stuff. And somebody just mentioned to me they were looking for a new Mrs. Johnston and it's such an incredible role. It's, you know, really sought after. So many great people have played it, like Petula Clark and Carol King even played it on Broadway and Barbara Dixon was the original Mrs. J. And I just thought, oh, that's a dream role. So I thought, well, I'll go along to the audition. Who knows? and got the part and just had the most amazing six months. We got great reviews. I was nominated for an Olivia. Oh, and I know, yeah. And with the work. Congrats, that darling. Slip that in there, darling. Sweetie, darling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now I'm a fully fledged. I wanted to ask you, when the Spice Girls were at their, their height, uh, there were all sorts of rumours that you were lesbian. Maybe it was the tracksuit, mm. I don't know. Mm. Uh, mm. Did that bother you at the time? Um, do you know what? It didn't because I, at first I thought it was quite funny and then, you know, the way the British tabloid media can be. Other people started to get involved, you know, in, in the stories, you know, whether it was my assistant or a friend of mine who was married. And then, you know, and then journalists start digging into to my friends' families and their past. And it's like, you know, I, I work in, in music, you know, I'm in the public eye and you kind of have to put up with the, the lack of privacy that sometimes you get. I mean, you know, that's fine for me. But when people don't work in that area of the business. I think it's unfair. So it annoys me on that level. Do you think things will change now with that kind of style of journalism where they can say anything and just print anything uh, without huge repercussion with all the News International uh, yeah, kind of... Yeah, uh, Yeah. You know, I doubt it. I mean, I, I think at the moment people are probably being a little bit more cautious, but I'm sure that it will get you know, back to where it was. I mean, you know, when I was with the girls back in 96, we were always told never talk about anything on the phone. We were told that then, back in 96. So I don't know whether it was paranoia or people, you know, looking out for us or it was going on then. People talked about bugging and, and you know, people listening to your phones, even then. I've got to 
must have been in the FBI, the Spice Girls, isn't it? You know, it was. Flipping, eh? Do you like being <laughs> famous? Um, do you know what? I do. It's a, it's something I always wanted when I was a kid. That was my dream. I wanted to, you know, be a pop star and be famous. And yeah, of course, there's negative aspects to it. But it's brilliant. You know, you get to do amazing things, meet amazing people, and working in the job I adore. You know, so it's overall, it's blooming good. You said that when the you got see the Spice Girls got back for that reunion, but weren't you the last one that sort of kind of came on board? Why were you so reticent about getting back yeah. with the girls? Well, I was pretty reluctant, and to be honest with you, I kind of dreaded the phone call. And I think that was because when we'd stopped working together, like back in 2001, I just was really over everything, and, and I don't think it was anything to do with the other girls. It was more personally for me. I had, you know, some personal issues that I had to address and deal with. So it was a very difficult time for me personally. And I think going back into that environment, I was nervous. I was nervous of having some of the old feelings coming back, you know. But um, I'd spent some time with the girls and we talked about the show and the great places we were going to play. And I just thought, this is such an opportunity. I really can't miss this. And um, I'm so glad I did it. I had an amazing time. And all us girls got a lot closer again, working together. Played venues like Madison Square Garden. Oh, drop that in there. <laughs> darling. Drop that in, darling. <laughs> uh, Lawrence Olivia Award. Can I, can I keep showing off? And then we did... <laughs> 17 nights at the O2 in London, you know, and I will never have the opportunity to do that as a solo artist. So to be able to do it with the girls again, see all our fantastic fans, play all our great songs, it was it was a wonderful thing that I'm really happy I didn't miss out. Have you read any of the other girls' autobiographies? I haven't, you know. Jerry Halliwell's, please, I've read five books in my life. Jerry's, I've read twice. It <laughs> really? is amazing. But how she writes about all of you is, it, you cannot put that book down. She says she invented the Spice Girls, true or false? <laughs> I knew it! Um, well, I, goodness me, I think that's, oh gosh, I, I, I really don't know what to say. Um... I'm seeing her on Sunday, actually. I'll pull her off about that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah. Go with a copy of her book and just say, could you just explain this chapter here? <laughs> it was It's a brilliant, I think, brilliant book. You know book. what? I think what's, what's fair to say about Jerry is she was a very strong driving force in the band, you know, because she's extremely ambitious, as we all were. Um, but, I, you know, I think we, we all played maybe not an equal role, but we all had strengths in different areas. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, are you... Having plans to do your autobiography, or is that not going to happen? I think I'm going to do my autobiography when I'm about seventy, <laughs> and I really, and I really don't care who I offend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now the new album is the Sea. Uh, you have talked about the fact that uh, this is um, a lot of blood and sweat and tears have gone into this. Why is this album particularly important to you? I think because I've had a bit of a break between records and I've done different things, and I just feel. I just feel really determined to do great work. You know what I mean? I just felt like I felt a lot stronger going into the studio, working with new collaborators, because sometimes I'm a little bit, I don't like to step out of my comfort zone, but I think now, I don't know whether it's being a little bit older or being a mum or whatever, I just want to face all my fears and just use that to, to make the best record of my career. And I do think that's what I've done. That really does sound like you, you, having, having a little baby has changed you, hasn't it? Yeah, it, I feel like I've got a fresh start. <laughs> that's how it feels. Are you going to be touring? I am. I'm going to do a couple of little shows in December. And then, fingers crossed, if the album does well, I'll do a much bigger tour in the new year. Passionate about music. 